Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. So if you watched last week's video on word counts and you heard Jessica's story about an author who changed Mary to Mary Jo to get 10,000 extra words in her book. <laughs> Um, so we thought that we can do a video on when your word count is too short, too long, what do you do? Because there's a lot of do's and don'ts. So what do you do if you've written your book and you watched last week's video and you thought, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 20,000. <laughs> I am 20,000 short or 100,000 long. <laughs> yes. And we get that um, a lot in our queries. Um, word count is one of the... Um, areas you need to fill in when you're querying query right. manager. And we get the books that are 200, 300,000 words um, in length. And we get those that are a lot. I get those that are 35,000, 40,000. And I'm talking adult because I only take adult right. queries. So those are two ranges that are problematic. You know, as we discussed last week, the sweet spot for those books would be give or take 90,000 words. And right. that's a lot different. Right. So I figured we could just go through like what an author can do. Because we hear a lot, oh, I could cut this book in half and I can make it two books. No. Yeah, we we get that a lot. I've had queriers who will re-query me within days and say, you know, because I will often try to tell people if word count might have been a problem. And within days, I'll get a uh, another query saying, I fixed the problem. I split my book in two. And that is a red flag to me. They're uh, essentially a lot of problems. <laughs> so the problem with that mostly is that you've written a book and you presumably written the book with one arc and it's one big giant story. So what you've done is instead of having the full arc of the story, you've chopped it in half right about where things are supposed to be getting to the climax of the book and we're going to start seeing a resolution. Well, presumably what you've done is made it so the reader has to read both books right. to complete one story. If you've been able to split the book in two and you haven't done that, then there's a lot of other problems with your book that right. I'm concerned about. I mean, anybody who says to me, I just split my book in two, I think that there's a lot more going on there than the ability to just split the book in two. Right. And even if you have split your book in two, then you have to, you still have to have a satisfying resolution. Every book has to have a satisfying resolution. Even yeah. if it is a sequel, there is a proposed sequel and things are going to keep going yeah the main conflict of that first book still has to have a resolution sequels always stand alone there could be a continuing storyline through the book through the series but each book needs to have its own storyline my recommendation if your book is 200,000 words let's say is really just to cut it down it is not yeah. to try to make it into two books um but it is to figure out how it's one book and it is very possible you have storylines in there that aren't necessary. And maybe those storylines could become a second book, but I don't think that book can just become two books. Right. So one of the things you have to do, I think, is look at every single scene and make sure that every scene is moving the plot forward. And mm -hmm. if it's not, you have to wonder if it's worth it being in there at all. Yeah. I mean, of course, there are scenes that we can just see characters having a good time or anything like that, but they have yeah. to But even propel... those tend to move. The, right. At least the character, we, we get to know the characters a little right. bit more. They do tend to always move the story forward. Right. So that that is like the number one test <laughs> that you should be doing and reading it out loud. Every time you read something out loud, you'll see, oh, this is droning on a little <laughs> bit. And if you can't read 200,000 words out loud, exactly. then there's a reason it's too long. Exactly. But you'll see what this is droning on too long or this makes no sense. This is a complete yeah. tangent. Things like that because you're hearing it. Um, so that is probably the best tip for cutting it down. Yes. But what about when it's... Bringing it back up. That is the harder one, I think. I think so too. I always say to my clients, it's easier for me to help you cut than right. it is for me to help you add. Right. Because presumably you've got everything down on paper and now we're just shaping it all. Yeah. Um, but now we've got to get it on paper, which is always harder. Yeah. And like you've made this full story and we have to see where we can add little subplots and divots and red herrings. and. I mean, maybe it's, it's a short story. You know, and maybe it's a long short story that actually needs to be cut versus a novel. And right. that, is there enough to your conflict that is really bringing this out across an entire book? Yeah, and that's something you'll have to figure out, and it's going to um, differ for the genre too. Yes. But I think if it's short, you may have to really not just think, how can I make this a full book, but maybe you really need to think, is, is this meant to be a full book? Maybe it's meant to be a short story, 
maybe it's meant to be sort of a, I don't know, almost like a, a practice in figuring out your characters and your ideas and then doing an, a book. The book comes later. Right. It could also tell you that you're not done. It could tell you that you've written your first draft and now you need to start over. And there's a right. lot that you miss. So there's an author, I, I follow her on Twitter, and she said that her first drafts always run short. Right. But she goes back a couple times, and every time she goes through, she's adding a couple thousand more words because she's seeing different scenes that need to be fleshed out more or yeah. where things are sort of cut off and they weren't finished. Developing um, characters more fully. Right. So it's possible that that is just telling you you need to go back and revise one more time because there are things that you're missing. Well, the other thing is no book has one storyline. Right. You know, even smaller books, books like category romance or cozy mysteries that are have smaller word counts by their nature even picture books yes they have con more than one storyline so that's something to look at do you only have one storyline do you need secondary storylines and even more secondary characters to make the book more well-rounded yeah and also i mean if you're working in mystery are there enough red herrings are you twisting the reader enough things like that so just reading in your genre also helps you know this is what my book is missing. Yep. Um, so good luck revising, because if you're high or low and watching this video, that's probably what you're doing next. Yeah, and think of word count as less of sort of a rule that publishing makes and more of a guide to make you a better writer and your book a better book. Yeah. Good luck, and don't forget to subscribe. Yes, and click the little bell so you get notifications of when our faces are popping up yeah, on your screen again. because then you won't miss the next chat we have on word count. That's it. <laughs>